Hello, everyone. Welcome to ITS 520. Um, so let's get started. Okay. I'm just getting letting some people in. All right. So I think that's everyone. All right. So uh, today, uh, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to go over um, kind of the where we are in the course as usual, uh, the outline, and then we're going to get to the topics. Uh, today is, is less of a lecture day because I'm really done with a lot of the lecturing part of the course where I do the intro of, of the main idea. So hopefully, um, you know, all that makes sense to you at this point. Uh, today, my goal is to make sure that um, the terminology is clear again as far as, you know, going from a problem, any kind of problem, to a data set that you can use for machine learning and in particular for supervised learning. So that means, you know, the vector space model. So I would stress that uh, today and we will go over sklearn. As I said, we're not going to spend too much on sklearn, but it'll be a good transition into uh, starting to use Python for machine learning uh, kind of scripting. And then as we start to move on to other things. So if you remember last Monday, we used Scholar, right? And I introduced uh, the count, you know, uh, count vectorizer basically. And we used that to convert some sentences into feature vectors. We're going to continue with that um, today. Plus, I'm going to add some of the sklearn things and, you know, and, and basically that information, uh, it, that approach, basically, that approach, really, I'm showing you an, a methodology or an approach in Python to machine learning, which we will continue to use for the rest of the semester, even though the libraries might change and they might get, get a little bit more powerful, right? Um, it's going to be pretty much the, the same approach. All right, so um, at this point, let me share, when I haven't shared, let me share the, um, the table of contents. So you should right now be looking at the, uh, on Brightspace, the table of contents. So currently we've gone over the intro, we went over Weka, uh, we went over performance metrics, we went over data sets and features, we went over scraping, and I introduced sklearn uh, last week, right? So today I'm going to uh, kind of spend my time there. As you can see, uh, after that, you're going to have a homework assignment on Twitter, and then we will be ready to move on to the big data uh, part of the course. So really, what I've been covering sklearn and WEC guys really just, you know, I, I, I introduced those topics because they're really good tools. Um, but it gives me an opportunity to kind of go over the slides and introduce a lot of the background. Now that, you know, that's done, we can really start getting into the power of machine learning. All right. So we'll start looking at some applications, some projects that we've been work that I've been working on with some of some students. And you'll get to actually see the power of um, machine learning, right? So it, you really are, you know, I can't stress enough, you are living in, a, in an era that's completely different where these things are, you know, you can actually do um, incredible things with them. So we'll start looking at those. Uh, as you can see, I will start with uh, probably next week. You know, my goal today because Twitter, as I've said a couple of times, I think, it's not a lecture, it's just a homework assignment. Um, and everything is provided there. So really, next Monday, I'm hoping to start with uh, introduction to TensorFlow, low-level API. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on the low-level API. I'm just going to introduce that kind of so that you know what I'm talking about when I, when I say uh, TensorFlow, high-level API, low-level API, TensorFlow 1, TensorFlow 2. But our focus will be mainly TensorFlow 2. Uh, as you can see, um, tensor operations and, and NumPy arrays, you know, these topics, um, 
they're, they're kind of, they go together. So it's very difficult to say when I'm going to do one or the other or the other, you know, I'm just kind of, you know, we'll, we'll get to it at some point, but you use all of this together, really, these three things, if you're seeing them. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that. We will get into Keras uh, this semester, right? And so as you can see, all of these four or five modules are the next section um, that we're going to be working on. All of it is going to be uh, focused on supervised learning. And then hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll get into reinforcement learning, which requires a little bit more, more time on supervised. Uh, it's actually something that doesn't require that much time, I think, once you get the other ones. And then as you can see, what I've done is really I've moved all the algorithms to the end. And I guess I, this one should be here. But I've moved Naive Bayes, KNN, where I was going to do those initially at the beginning, I've kind of decided in deep learning, in my deep learning 530 class, that's where I go into all the different algorithms. So it kind of makes sense that I should leave these simple algorithms for the very end of the class because you're not really going to be using them. You, it's really more about your knowledge of them. And so it kind of made, makes sense to leave them towards the end. So uh, recommender systems, obviously, that's a, an important topic. So I'll, I'll definitely cover that. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. So we are about to start this section, which is it's the most important, I would say, the thing that will give you the most power. So make sure that at this point you have mastered the rest, okay? So the rest, because we're still going to be using all of this, it's just, you know, we're moving to a, a more advanced set of things where, you know, it's like what, the way that I would divide this class is that we have the introduction, which is just the general topics and it's not big data. And then we move into the, once we've covered the general introduction and the approach for non big data, then we're going to move to big data. And so moving to big data means, you know, we, you know, we have to make some, it, be more efficient. So it requires a few changes in how we think about things. All right, so that's kind of the, the layout. So hopefully by next Monday, I will start going over these. Okay, now I wanna talk a little bit about homework assignments. Um, so you have a homework assignment due today, uh, which is this one, the scraping and uh, vector space model homework. All the files are there, as you can see. It's what I discussed in the videos, but I, I've kind of summarized it here. Complete the following, scrape data from three websites and three RSS feeds, clean the data, plot the most frequent terms, describe insight, insights, and the code is attached. Right, so, and, and that's somewhere on, on this module. And there, part two, which is the thing I introduced last week, is with the collected data from part one, create a corpus of annotated data, All right? So one of the things I wanna to describe today in a little bit more detail is what, a corp, what that term means, a corpus, right? But it's basically the data set. It just has that name, corpus. <laughs> so create a corpus of annotated data for supervised machine learning. And then identify, you know, remember, these are the things you must master. Identify what are the samples, the features, and you will assign labels. So I gave the example that you, you know, in politics, right? You wanna know who's gonna win the election. So you would get RSS feeds or websites, you know, from CNN, Fox News, uh, one of those. And then you basically take 50 sentences, you read them and you annotate them as being, you know, Democrat. And then you take another 50 sentences and you annotate and read them and you say, okay, this is Republican. So now you have a corpus of data that has labels, right? So now, you know, you do machine learning and your goal would be to predict if that sentence is leaning Republican, leaning Democrat, for instance, right? So that's kind of the idea. Uh, professor? Yes. I have a question. Uh, at the part two, we sort of stuck a lot of students because I've been talking to them. Uh -huh. Is it possible that you can extend a couple of days that we can master a little bit on this, please? Yeah, I can extend it. Uh, that's fine. Give you one more week. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is, uh, so this is, uh, this homework assignment in particular is very important that you 
are clear on because this is the problem that you will always have to do in machine learning. Whether, you know, we, we do websites and RSS feeds because we have an abundance of things on the web, but this could be images, network data, whatever it is, you have to always understand how to create a corpus of annotated data and then uh, perform your machine learning on it, okay? Thank you so much. So uh, tonight, uh, the due date is tonight. So uh, we expect another week, right? Yeah, I'm going to extend it to next week. Thank you so much. All right, so, con so you're going to convert your data to the vector space model and analyze. Uh, so, so after you've taken your sentences, right, your 100 sentences, 50 of each class, you label it. So remember, it's, I'm not telling you what problem to pick. Pick a problem, you know. Maybe you like um, iPhones, right? And so you go and and you find a um, a board, and you know you you know you you grab a hundred sentences of people talking about iPhones, and then you label it as these people like the iPhone, and then these people don't like the iPhone. So you have two classes. Whatever you 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 want, you can do. But at the end of the day. You know, do a simple two class problem, minimum of 100 sentences or RSS feeds or whatever. And then um, once you have that, you have to convert that into the vector space model. So that's what this part says here convert your data to the vector space model. And, you know, so that means what? When I say that, that means convert it into a corpus. When I say convert something into a corpus, is take the data, which in this case would be sentences, right, and convert it to features, right? You, and, and I can't tell you how to convert things into features. I gave you one approach, uh, which is to do the bag of words approach. There are many approaches. You could just say, you know what, my features are going to be the number of times I see positive words. And my feature will be the number of times I see negative words. My features is going to, my feature is going to be the number I, number of times I see pronouns. Uh, so all of that are procedures, right? So all, all of that are approaches to convert data into feature vectors. And that's one thing that there is no solution to that. There is no like one way of doing it. In fact, there are many ways of doing it, but you just have to always remember to be con you know, consistent, right? So if you define a feature, that feature needs to exist in all samples in your data. It's not good to have some sentences um, that would not have anything related to that feature. You have to, that, so that has to appear in some way. In some, in some, in some sentences or samples, that could be a positive value and others it could be a negative value, but it should always be present in some way. All right, so this is a, a key thing that I want you to, that I want to stress that it's important. Now, I, I don't necessarily expect you to understand this right away um, and don't feel that you have to, you know, that you've fallen behind if you don't get it. I'm, I'm stressing that going from data to a corpus and converting via the vector space model takes time, right? So it's, it's a challenge. But anyway, so you'll take your data. I want to see how you do it. And then depending on how you do it, you know, we'll talk about, you know, what I noticed. So convert your data to the vector space model and analyze it using Weka. Now you can use the code for count vectorizer, uh, which is the code I described in class last week to convert your text to features, right? So today I will go over that a little bit more detail. Uh, that is usually referred to that, that approach with that code of count vectorizer. Remember, and I'm gonna say it, it's called the bag of words approach. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the standard approaches, not the best one, but certainly one that has been used for many years until neural networks kind of change all of that. But um, so the bag of words approach it's basically about frequencies again, right? So just like you're doing with your frequency plots over here, the bag of words approach is, is a similar thing where you're calculating the most frequent words and then 
you see how many times those words appears, appear in your samples, okay? Um, so right now we're only using text, but just be aware, you know, you, you also have to think of how to do this in other senses, but actually in like in network data, count vectorizer, it, it's also um, something that you can, you can use because uh, if you think about it, network data will, it's a, in a sense, will be like tokens in a sense. All right, anyway, so you'll do this, and then uh, I provided, so the code, whenever you wanna look at sklearn code, I provided this link here, so you can click on it, and it'll open. And then I, I have here in my GitHub a whole bunch of examples of how to use a lot of the things that we're discussing in class today, uh, all, the, all the things related to sklearn, so I, I strongly recommend that you look through these. So a lot of what I'm gonna do today is, is already here. Here's the bag of words approach. So certainly uh, take a look at it. Uh, and so a lot of the code examples are there. All right. All right, so that's the homework assignment. So as I said, this we're gonna extend this homework, although I, I'm assuming most of you have completed part one, correct? Uh, yes. And you have uh, plots, you've, you've plotted the frequency. I've seen some homework that where people uh, have professor we have done until the first part is done i mean we got the graphs but we don't know how to go beyond that point okay and you know how to convert okay. this whole thing into vector space model that is what giving me a hard time okay we'll talk so remind me today of uh kind of talking more about that but it's exactly the count you know or at least the example i'll do is like I, what i did last monday with count vectorizer um, so the idea, as I said, is you're going to take, so you, when you, when I say, you know, learn the terminology, you know, I, I, I mean that. So for instance, when I say, take this data, three websites or three RSS feeds and convert it into a corpus for supervised learning, that in your head needs to mean something. Okay. So maybe right now it's not clear and that's, you know, that's okay. That's, that's, that's the way it should be. But what I'm saying is in the future, as, as you, if you learn something from this, is that if I say scrape data from somewhere, convert it into a corpus for supervised learning, you should understand, okay, what I mean is go from abstract raw things into um, a data set that I can use for supervised machine learning. And what the problem is, what question you're trying to answer, that's, you know, it depends on you know, your curiosity or if somebody hired you to do this work or, or something along those lines. All right, so anyway, so we will come back to this today. Um, so that's the first homework assignment that I wanna talk about. Then I also posted another one. And that one was going to be, is going to be due a week from today as well. So if you go to, so we, uh, we've done this, and then data scraping, all the code is there, and you guys are telling me that you've already got the frequency plot, so that's good. So then after that, um, in sklearn, where you see this link, so this is what we're gonna work on today, right? So I'll go over ba the basic sklearn pipeline uh, for machine, or, or sorry, the basic Python, pipeline for machine learning. So I provided some code here as well. Okay, so these four are, are exam sample code and there's also that link I gave you on my GitHub to sklearn so you can use all of those. I think I've already gone over this uh, slide so I believe I finished these last week. And then I added this homework assignment here so this will be due next Monday. Uh, and this one should be pretty straightforward, actually. So this one, all I, all I want you to do is, you're going to analyze the following three data sets. And I provided them here. So they're different, they're all different. This one, for instance, is about uh, Twitter data. So it's, you know, tweets. This is about credit card fraud, so it's not text. This is going to be, you know, like transaction data. And this one, I can't remember what this is. This is, 
Can you guys see the website that I just clicked on? Oh, these are some, uh, some truck failure information. So it's, it's just about, you know, trucks and predicting if their engine, the engines will need maintenance or something. So anyway, the data sets are different. So you will just use those three data sets and then using any four machine learning algorithms, you're going to, you're going to perform supervised learning again using this time around though, using both Weka and the SK Learn code that I'll provide for you. And then you will basically do, you know, something very straightforward. You will write a report showing the following. All performance metrics of each algorithm. You're gonna compare Weka results to SK Learn results. You're gonna perform feature ranking for each data set to try to identify the most important features. And you're gonna indicate the best results and why. Are there any questions about this assignment? So I think it's pretty straightforward. But are there any questions? Anything not clear? This is clear. This is clear, right? All right, so you have two homework assignments then uh, for next week, okay? And you know, you kind of have to do them because uh, we got to move a little bit faster. Um, after that, we're going to have the Twitter assignment, and the Twitter assignment will be the exact same assignment as the data scraping assignment, right? So that's, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like making you do this and then reinforcing it with the Twitter assignment, okay? Twitter, I haven't assigned it yet. I'm going to wait for those two to be submitted to just see where you guys are with them. And then uh, I will assign this one. I provided already, again, the Python code and everything. And all you have, to, what you have to do is the same. You have to create an account because that's the way Twitter works. And you're gonna go in there and you're gonna scrape any data that you want from Twitter. Remember that uh, for, unless you pay, Twitter only gives you about seven days worth of tweets. And I think they throttle you to about a hundred, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they throttle you to about a hundred tweets per like a minute. So you, you'll have to like wait and, but you'll have to collect some data. This time around, because it's Twitter, I'm going to ask you to have more than just a hundred samples, okay? So the goal here will be to have more than a hundred samples. And now this time, before I assign this homework, I'm going to, we're gonna discuss in class um, what type of problem it is that you want to address. So for instance, as I said, you know, uh, maybe COVID, right? So COVID tracking. So could you develop a machine learning algorithm that could monitor Twitter data over a period of time and then learn when COVID is, you know, uh, spiking, right? by something that is happening in Twitter. You know, maybe people are tweeting more about it or are or, or, or sounding more concerned about it. And so you, you wanna pick that up, okay? Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so it sounds like there's no questions. So that will be, but, but I haven't assigned that homework yet, okay? Okay, so I have not assigned it yet. Um, as I said, because you already have two homework assignments that I want you to work on. However, if you master, if you master this SKLearn homework, which is just analyzing data sets with SKLearn and Weka, and in particular, if you master this one, scraping in the vector space model, and in particular, as I said, having a problem, defining a problem that you want to understand, scraping some data off of Twitter and then creating a corpus for supervised learning, you know, you might consider this time not just the vector space or the count vectorizer approach, but also engineering your own features, right? So, so anyway, so mastering those, the, these two homework assignments should give you a little bit more um, skill or practice for the Twitter homework, but pretty much the same thing. All right, so just wanted to stress that. So I'll probably assign this one, as you might imagine, next Monday. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, it'll probably be just a week long as well. 
Okay. And, and that's basically the plan. All right. So, so I've talked about the two homework assignments. Let me actually, since I'm here, I can already. Um, I think I can extend this. Yeah. So I would extend it to the 12th. And then the end date. Okay. All right, so I think now if I look at it, yeah, it says now due October 12. All right, so that's good. That's uh, extended. And then the sklearn one, that one's already correct. Okay. And then Twitter, as I said, not yet, but just be aware. They're kind of a sequence of just, I, I really honestly, up until now, from the start of intro all the way to this Twitter assignment, it's basically just very basic stuff. You know, what I would call learn the pipeline, learn the terminology. That's, that's really all we're doing. Okay. So, you know, learn learn the pipeline, learn the terminology, you know, practice with data that's accessible on the web that I'll, you know, that gives us the freedom to build data sets instead of just using uh, data sets, right? So that really the, one of the key things in machine learning is, is, is that, you know, how do you create a corpus from abstract raw data? And in particular right now for supervised learning. All right, so are there any questions? before I move to the next thing. I have a quick question. Please. For the data scraping, are we gonna get 100 per website and RSS feed or 100 total? That's a good question, actually. So <clears throat> I want you to get, um, so if we go back to this homework assignment, right? So I want you to get just a practice from three websites, from three RSS feeds, and then for each one, you're going to create a plot, correct? That's clear? Yeah. Okay. But then as far as part two, I really just want you to define a problem. You know, define a problem and then create a corpus. So if you think that you can define a problem where you could draw data from three websites and three RSS feeds, that would be fine. But it's also fine if you just use one RSS feed. Do you okay. understand? Because it yeah. all depends on the type of problem that you're going to try to answer. Yeah, I've been doing each one separately and it's kind of difficult. They end up just being pretty simple. Like uh, mm -hmm. one of mine was just a machine learning Wikipedia page. So okay. it's just whether or not it had machine learning like in the sentence that I was looking at. Okay, so you were, you were building a classifier. Is this sentence about machine learning or not? Yeah. And then I was doing that for like politics that's, that's, and then Celia? I did it also for uh, like um, Republican or Democrat, like you said, but with a, with a New York Times article and then an artificial intelligence um, just document that I found. Okay, that, that's fine. I mean, that's good practice, I would say, right? So the, the whole point of it is to practice, to create the data set. Um, so it's up to you, but really just define one problem and connect, sorry, collect 100 samples of it. Okay. And how you convert them, you know, it's part of you figuring things out, right? So as I said, that's why define one problem. So politics, you could get CNN, Fox, uh, the New York Times, as you said, three RSS feeds from the Dem Democratic Party, the Republican Party, um, I don't know, someone else, some other RSS feed, they're all text, right? And then you combine, you just have to make sure that the features are all there, right? So you'd have to mix it up somehow. Yeah, I was struggling to find RSS feeds with 100, like, things that I could take from. Yeah, you would have to, I think, collect over like a day, you know, a few hours, you know, like an hour and then another day maybe. But yeah, it's, it's up to you how you do it. So it's your choice. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. 
Yeah, so really just at the end of the day, you just need one corpus of 100 samples, okay? Minimum, so I, I should say minimum. Why, why did I pick 100 samples? Because usually anything less than that and it's just not enough data, if that makes sense. So obviously when, when I, like I said, when we do the one for Twitter, it's gonna be more than 100 samples, but you will have had more practice with it. So, and, and it'll, you know, you'll, you'll deal with the pain of actually collecting the data from, from Twitter, which is not, you know, they throttle you and everything. So you have to maybe a couple of, over a couple of days collect the data. Make sense? Yep. Okay, any other questions? Good, great question, Kyle. Any, any other questions? Thanks. <clears throat> All right, so if there are no questions, right, let's go then to little contents again. All right, so both homework assignments have been assigned. I said, and then we will come back to Twitter. I'm not hearing any questions. Today, I'm just gonna go over code, right? So I'm not gonna have any slides per se. Uh, we're just gonna uh, head on to uh, Scholar and, and do some work there, All right? And then next week, my plan, as I said, will be once we understand the pipe, we we focus on the pipeline. Uh, we will get into uh, TensorFlow uh, for the rest of the semester. If you think about it, you know SK Learn is great, uh, but I don't usually use SK Learn. And you know, ask this, you know students that have used this and used machine learning, you know, in, in the previous classes you don't end up using it that much except for a few things, all right? So really because it's, it's not an optimized, it's a great library, it's just not as optimized as a few other ones out there, all right? And so, you know, my goal is to get you guys to have tools that are very much in demand. Now, sklearn is very much in demand, but, um, I'm not going to stress so much time on it, okay? A lot, a lot of the things about these libraries, again, is that, or as well, is that they're very similar. So, you know, sklearn has a whole bunch of functions that TensorFlow has, that PyTorch has, that NumPy has, and so on. So it's, it's very, sometimes, the, it's not repetitive, but if you, my, my, my feeling is if you understand one, you kind of already understand a little bit of the other one. So everything is pretty consistent that way. All right, so today definitely will be our, our, our day to look at sklearn. So I'm gonna start just coding. Um, I'm sure you guys love that. Um, I've, as I said, remember all the code that I'm going to describe today all the code that I'm going to describe today can be found here. Okay, in that, um, oh, here, sorry, that link. So if you'd like, I'm also going to put that link in the other uh, module. So today's module is this one here. I'm just going to add the link here. Okay. Well, that should be there in there. Yeah, there it is. And maybe I'm just going to move the homework below so it's there. All right, great. Okay. All right. Um, are there any questions? So, so how, so how can I put this? I could lecture 
three hours about how to create a corpus, all right? I could do that. However, what I think is I'm giving you two assignments, the Twitter one and the data scraping one, okay? So I'm giving you these two assignments. I will be somewhat flexible, do your best, but I will be somewhat flexible in these and, and consider that you will get feedback from these. If I don't like what you did, I'm going to let you know, let you know it. And I'm going to give you uh, room to fix what you did wrong. Okay. Until you get it right. So kind of think of this as learning by doing. All right. As I, as I believe that this is very critical. All right, what, what you're doing here, you must um, understand. All right, so we may, so what, what I may do is, I'm giving you these two homework assignments, I'm gonna give you feedback, I'm gonna give you time to redo it, but do a good job initially. But I will give you an opportunity to redo it, and then maybe after I've gone over all homework assignments, I will do a summary lecture, just to kind of stress anything that I noticed that was a common theme that was missed, okay? All right, so hopefully that made sense. All right, now that we're done, then let's, let's go ahead and move to sklearn. So there's no slides or code that I'll be using here. Instead, use these for your own reference, but we're just gonna go to Scholar. All right, so hopefully, can you guys see my Scholar page now? So go to Scholar, I'm going there. Okay, so I'm in Scholar now. All right, so, and I believe that's what you guys are seeing. So if you remember last week, um, I had this folder ITS 520, so I'm just gonna open up the terminal emulator here. That's what you should be seeing as well. And I'm just gonna navigate to the desktop and go into ITS 520. All right, and I have one script in there, which is the vector space model script. All right, so let's go ahead and open that one. All right, so if you remember last week, I kind of left, gave you this code here. All right, um, and it was simple code to, you know, to apply basically the bag of words approach. Bag of words approach, you can see that here. And as you can see, the library in question was sklearn. SK -learn. So let's kind of look at that one in a little bit more detail today. Oh, um, before I forget, Mitch, are you there? Yeah, I am. Are we doing that GPU thing now or later? Uh, it's up to you. It should uh, be a quick fix. So. Okay. Can you, uh, you want to do it now just so that they update everything? Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. Let me save this. All right. So, so Mitch is going to, we need to do an update uh, on TensorFlow 2 for the GPU, and Mitch is going to guide us through that. I think you have the screen, Mitch. Uh, that's, I believe it's disabled. It's disabled? Okay. Yep. Um. So 
Okay, try it now. Yep, we're good. Everyone see the screen? I can see it. Okay. All right. So if everyone goes to the TensorFlow 2 environment, so uh, to do that, just type bash and then conda activate ITS520 underscore TF2. Um, originally, it was set for a CPU. Um, installation, not GPU. Uh, to change that, all you would need to do is type conda install tensorflow dash GPU. It, it, uh, we should stress that this is on TF2. Yes. Okay. Um, once that command to run, just go ahead and hit enter. Conda install TensorFlow dash GPU. Yep. Um, so think some environments would pop up. Um, basically, where would it be? If you wanted to check, you can just go to TensorFlow. And then it would say TensorFlow 2.2.0 GPU. Um, and then all you would need to do is just, uh, proceed with the installation. So just hit Y and then enter. Okay. Once that's done, you can just go ahead and type conda list and then grab TensorFlow. And you'll see TensorFlow GPU 2.2.0. Type conda list grep tensorflow. Yep. So mine is still solving the environment. Yeah, sometimes it's solving the environment could take a while. I don't know why it does that. Um, it just, it, this happens. Yeah, so the reason why we're doing this is that ITS 520 TF2, that environment was only working with CPU. And we needed to work with the GPUs, obviously. And so that's why we should fix that problem. Is it is this working for some of you guys? Um, not yet. I'm still solving environments. 
Yeah, me too. <laughs> Does it found conflicts looking for incompatible packages? This can take several minutes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm in the same spot. That's what mine's showing as well. So. So I mean, those are definitely the commands. I don't know why. Yeah, it might just be a um, an issue with Anaconda. I don't know why. I I didn't run into that issue, so I don't know why everyone else is. Okay, just start it now. Mine just went through and said it installed the CUDA driver. Okay. Yeah, cool. it'll install some uh, some extra stuff for the GPU. Let's give it a minute because this is really important, actually. And uh... yeah, I got that same thing with the CUDA driver. It says it's installed, but there's no <laughs> option for like yes or no or anything. Yeah, I didn't get the yes or no either. So I'm kind of just I'm gonna I'm gonna try solving that environment once again and see what happens. And... Let it let it try to do whatever it's doing. Maybe. No, well, it it, fin it finished out it, when it installed the CUDA driver. It finished it out. Oh yeah. It just didn't give me the yes or no option like what he had on his. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. It seems like mine is trying to install, or it's installing. Oh, it's, it's examining conflict for several packages. That's what it's doing. Yeah, so I didn't get the yes or no either. It might just automatically do it. Um, I think I deleted TensorFlow off this environment just to redo it for the, the demo. All right, so. Uh... But just to double check it, you could always just run this command and see if it installed. Conda, what was it? Conda what? Conda list. Yeah, I ran that. It didn't show it for me. It's it's the last one on the list is for me is the est estimator. Hmm. So grab TensorFlow. Let me try. Yeah, it yeah exactly. It shows TensorFlow, TensorFlow base, TensorFlow estimator. Hmm. Not doing the... Yeah, I'm rerunning the install, seeing if that's going to work. Okay, yeah, please try that. I ran the NVIDIA dash me, Mitch. Yeah. And it says NVIDIA me has failed because it couldn't communicate with the NVIDIA driver. Made sure that the latest NVIDIA driver is installed and running. Could it be that these don't have the NVIDIA driver installed? No, no, but that sh that TensorFlow one had it, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that shouldn't be it. Because I had this, um, no, I have it working without mm -hmm. the that driver issue. Okay. Should I just try to install it again, maybe? Yeah, try and do it. But instead, um, it, after the dash GPU, put uh, equal sign, equal sign, and then um, 2.2. Two. Try that. Equal sign, that. equal sign. And then 2.2. 2.2. Two. Two two. That may force it. Okay. All right, I'll try that. Invalid package specifications. Did you run the the conda install command with it? I did, yeah. Did it work for anyone, guys? Or, or... 
are some of you getting it to work and others aren't or, or what's going on? Is there anyone that, or that got after, it? To after I ran it again, it still says the found conflicts thing. Okay. That's a mm. worst case, I can always just um, do the same thing and, and make the share the environment from mine. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to keep working on it. Uh, we don't need it today. Um, so, but we just have to. Yeah, when I when I grab the TensorFlow, all I I get the first three, but I do not get the GPU out of it. Mm -hmm. That's odd. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to keep keep working on it. Um, what was the command um, that they had in that? Do you remember? To make the the environment work. Yeah. I don't remember. All I ran yesterday, or whenever I got it to work, was. Mm -hmm. um, just to install the, the GPU. Yeah. Let's try one more thing. Wondering if that would make it work. All right, could you, someone try this command out? Um, it's the same one, just adding a dash C anaconda in the, before the TensorFlow part. I will try it in a minute. I tried that, uh, the TensorFlow dash GPU equals 2.21 and um, it's still solving the environment for that one. So as soon as that one's done, I'll try that. Okay. I'm trying it right now. Mine is just stuck in that and I don't want to kill it because I don't want to damage it. So I'm, I'm waiting for it to finish what I was doing. I'm going to try the command in that, in that post. Remember conda create TF GPU TensorFlow GPU, Mitch, maybe it's just a conflict with that environment. So maybe if we just create a new one, a complete new one, maybe that'll work. You know what I mean? Okay, so mine is, so I'm going to exit out. Hey, 
Hey, Mitch, what was that? Uh, what was that last command you said? Try it again. The Conda installed dash C TensorFlow GPU. So I ran the command, um, that command, conda, um, create name TF GPU, TensorFlow GPU. Yeah. And it's installing now. So it's just creating a new environment called TF GPU. Right. So that one, it wouldn't hurt for, for everyone to just have that one as well. Because that one should be GPU. I'm, I'm going to check in a second, but. Are you are you sharing something on your screen now, Mitch? Yeah, just another uh, install command to try. Is that working for for everyone? Okay. Not yet. Oh, I, I still got like. I mean, it's still solving the environment for it, but it said it like failed and it's retrying it. Okay, maybe I can try to share my screen, Mitch. Let me sh let me do it. Okay. Quick. All right, so I'm going to share my screen, guys. Um, so what I ran was this command. Um, that one. Can you guys see it? Conda create dash dash name TFGPU TensorFlow GPU. So what that does is it, it'll create a third environment. Um, so we have the TF1, TF2. Now we'll have this TFGPU. When I hit enter, it just goes through the installation, okay? So I'm not gonna hit enter again because I already did it, um, but you guys can type that, okay? And then after that, I'm gonna do conda activate TFGPU and that, so now I'm in the TFGPU environment. So if I do Python, right, I'm in Python and then I'm gonna do import TensorFlow, oops. TensorFlow as TF. All right, and then we have that. So now I'm going to do session. See if this works. TF dot session. You don't need that for two. Yeah. Uh, I think if you uh, just make a constant, um, it should work. Okay. Do you see anything of any reference to the GPU there? No. What? I wonder if the drivers are not installed on these. See, it says no CUDA capable device is detected. Do you see that, Mitch? Yeah. I'm wondering if um, it's not. Uh, scholar isn't um yeah because when i ran that temp it should have given me oh, 
No command. Oh, that's right. Has failed because it couldn't communicate with NVIDIA driver again. I wonder if this is really strange. All right, well, we're going to have to figure this out. Um, I still don't see anything on the GPU. Let me try something. Node CSC is CUDA error, no device. And this is TF1, Mitch, right? Right. I think that might be happening because um, it, when you log in, Scholar is not allocating a GPU. Um, did we have to, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking is that the, it's not detecting the GPU. I mean, TF1 should have detected the GPU for sure. And it keeps saying this thing about the driver, which, well, I don't know. Um, maybe just, Try to try to figure. So it, it's working on your computer, which is strange, but no one else's. Did, guys, is is it is is there anyone that got this to work? That got a GPU? So I signed back. I logged out and signed back in, and then it it allocated me a GPU. Really? Yeah. How so? I mean, what did you do different? I I, li I just went up. I just logged out and logged back in. You think it was okay? So uh, log out. Yep. Log back in. Do you think it was just like a fluke that is for? Wow. Yeah, I mean, it just it might just be the the queue is not open at the time we sign in. That would be sad. I guess everybody try to log out and, and log back in. So once you were logged back in, how did how did how do you know that you have a GPU now? I just went and did the import TensorFlow and then made a constant. I didn't do anything different. I just started the environment like normal. So you mean here? Yep. No, that that won't work, the NVIDIA command.
not working for me. Okay. So I don't know. When I run the uh, conda list grip TensorFlow, I can see a GPU. When I do the Python thing, I don't see one. When you do what? When I do the uh, conda list uh, grip TensorFlow, the GPU shows up in that list. But when I do the Python thing you're doing, it doesn't. Conda list. Python. Yeah, and then bar grip TensorFlow. Uh, You're not in the uh, TensorFlow GPU? Yeah, you have to be in TFGPU. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I get. The guess. software is, in, that, that would tell me that the software is installed, but the problem is when it, when the software tries to get the GPU, does it get it? Right, Mitch? Yeah, so if it's available, it should be um, allocated. Let me try what, what the, the environment you had was, oops. Oh, bash. I don't get it. This has never given us any problems. So here you said conda list type prep answer flow. Yeah, I'm getting like an error that that's saying like the NVIDIA driver isn't there pretty much. I don't, I don't get that. So no, nobody got, so when you, when you do something, Mitch, you get a GPU, correct? You get a... Yeah, I could share the screen and yeah, go, go ahead and show us, and maybe, um, hold on, go ahead. All right, let's try this again. So that was it before I ran it. Let's go ahead and do this again. Yeah, Tesla V100. Yeah. Yeah, we, we got these last week. I remember we, right? Yep. I think it. I think it's the problem with the how Scholar is allocating the the GPU environments. All right. So, for us to check, all of us have to go to that TF two, right? The one that and and do the constant, correct? Yep. So it would be maybe run it again for everyone to see. Um, we're gonna try this one last time, and if not, we're gonna we're gonna try we're gonna see what it is. But um, we we're gonna start using this next week. Activate ITS five twenty TF two.
Now, when I do import TensorFlow as TF, I'm actually getting an error in the Python environment when I'm using that TF2. That's odd. Yeah. I can't even import it. I do Python. Yeah, I'm getting an error now. Do you guys get an error when you go to the TF2 and you um, type Python and then import TensorFlow as TF? Yep. You do as well. So it doesn't even like load it. You get an error? Yeah, I get the same thing. Oh, okay. Huh. All right, we'll, we'll have to figure out what's going on. Something, something has happened with um, Scholar because it was not doing, it was, Fine last week. And it can be because I installed the GPU because that's the whole point of Conda, right? That you can have multiple installations. Right. So that, you know, one installation is not going to affect the other one. If I go to Conda, activate TF GPU. Python import here it works here I in in the in the TF GPU I'm able to import the library <sighs> yeah, it, I don't know. There's something wrong. I keep doing it and I keep getting just a CPU. I'm not able to reach the GPU. So, Mitch, we're going to have to work on this. Okay. Yeah. Fortunately, guys, sorry, but I don't know what, why this is not working. Scholar has been pretty, um, pretty good so far. All right, we should be. So let me. Are you sh are you still sharing, Mitch? No. All right. No, I stopped. Me, yeah. Let me. Um, I think the TF1 environment should work though for what we need today. So you guys should be seeing my screen. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use the TF1, even though we're not really using anything related to TensorFlow today, we're just gonna finish up our discussion of sklearn. So I'm gonna go into that environment. So follow along. Conda environment ITS 520 TF1. Conda activate. And then we have this file here. Uh, let's go to the desktop. And then let's go to ITS 520. All right, so let's open up this file, VSM. All right, so if you remember, this is what we were doing. Let me just make sure this file does still run. Least. 
All right, there we go. So it is still running. Um, okay, so this is where, gonna, where we are going to pick up. Unfortunately, we wasted a lot of time on this. Um, but anyway, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is it's 317, so I don't want this video to be that long. Let me stop this video so it starts to generate, and then I'm gonna pick up at 328, and we're just gonna continue with the, the SKLearn portion of it. Okay, guys? So I'm going to sign off, and then, um, you know, Mitch and I will work later on on trying to figure out what happened with the GPU. Um, because it didn't work for anyone, correct? Just, just Mitch, basically. Is that correct? Guys? Yep. All right. All right, so I'm gonna stop this for 10 minutes, generate the video, and then I'll, we'll pick up again.